there are games that I get that I am just really pumped about, you know, excited to see when I get them. And there are other games that I get and it's kind of out of the blue. And this is one of those games. This is War of Endines, which is a battle con game. And I'm assuming that the battle con is like this, as far as I can tell from looking into it, it's a system and this is a game built in the system. It actually says battle connection fighting system. Yeah, that was my detective skills reading that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what this game is, in essence, is it's Street Fighter, or Mortal Kombat, or... Whatever your favorite video game fighting thing. We're not very hip by saying Street Fighter, are we? No. I don't know what the modern ones are. They aged us right there. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, but you're, you're taking two people, or, you know, some roles, more than two people, and you're going to fight off against each other. Let's take a look at the mechanics, and we'll be back. Here's the board for the game. There's actually another side of the board here where uh, you can play up to four players and the rules show how to play four players and go back and forth. But I'm just going to concentrate today on the two-player game because I think that that's really the meat of the game. There's a lot of different variants. Each player is going to have a character and there's little tokens here that show that you start with 20 life and then there's another token here to show time. Each match of this game is going to be 15 rounds and if no one has knocked the other person out, made them go below 20, uh, points of life, then whoever has the f less life at the end of 15 rounds is the loser and the other person wins. Now, there are 18 characters included in the game and there are at least four more. I know you can get through other methods, but each character comes with a character card, five style cards, and one special move card. They also come with uh, a cardboard token that goes in a stand-up thing, and these stand-up things aren't very good quality. They're a real pain to work with, but Eventually, you get the things into them. And sometimes, a character will come with tokens, depending on that character's special ability. So, for example, here, Luke Von Gult, he comes with five time tokens. Okay? So, he starts here. And then the other character that we're looking at today here is Haikaru Soriyami. And he has the same thing. Five styles and one special attack, a palm strike. And he is placed here on the other side. And so, the characters are getting ready to start each other, face against each other. There's another whole pile of tokens that are included for usage possibly in the game. And then there's another whole stack of cards. And these stack of cards, in them there is what we call basic attacks. There's six basic attacks, uh, shot, dash, burst, strike, grasp, and drive. And each player is going to get a set of these. Depending on how uh, advanced you want the game to be, you can also give a player a special action. And there are other decks of card, which I won't talk about much today in the review, that will allow a player to play basically a much more powerful person. Uh, they have an almighty or an you know experience with crush and blaster and blitz and bolts. But for now, each of the players gets those basic cards. Now, the way that the game works is you have your character card and you'll put that character card in front of you. Now the character card has some information here. That's for their special move. You don't really need that unless you use the special move, which in the basic game you don't. And then you have some abilities here, special abilities that the character can use. So you, each character will have different special abilities. Luke Von Gott, he can use time tokens to give himself uh, special powers. He'll start with some and he gets some time tokens every turn. So you put that card in front of you and then you're going to take a look at the rest of the cards that you have in your hand. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to take two of your styles. So let's say I take uh, Eternal and Memento, and I put them here. And then you're going to take two of your attacks. So I'll take Burst and, and Flash and put them here. Now what those cards are are basically discarded cards. You'll see why in a moment. But you're left with three of your styles and five of your attacks. So now you basically have 15 choices. You're going to take one of your attacks and one of your styles and you're going to play it face down. And when your opponent has done the same thing, you're going to flip them over. Now what you do is you put them together here. Now, so I put this together. This is a chrono shot. And I look at this. So the range is plus zero. So my range is just one to four. So I'm going to, I can hit someone who's one to four spaces away on the board. My damage that I will do is the power. 1 plus 3 is 4, so it's a 4 damage attack. And my priority is 3. Now, the reason that priority is important is because whoever has the higher priority goes first. So we look at, so that's what I played. Now, 
Haikuro has the same thing that he's doing. Let's say he played a palm strike drive. Uh, I'm sorry, not a palm strike drive, but a focused palm strike. So he has a range of one and a power of two and a priority of six. He would go first, but before he revealed the cards, he played one of his tokens here, wind, a plus two priority on top of the cards. And he can do that before he shows it, and then that token, he won't be able to use it again until he plays a card that lets him take that token back. And so he has a priority of plus two now, so he has eight, six plus two is eight. Now, then we look at the beginning of these cards, and this is called a beat. This is one beat of, of the match. And so different things happen here. For example, you'll see start of beat on his card. It says advance one space, so he moves forward one space. And then this says on hit, so if he hits the opponent, that happens. If he damages the opponent, that happens. He has a range of one. He's not close enough, so his damage does not work. So he misses, which gives uh, Luke a chance to fight back. Luke's range is from one to four. He's there. He does four damage, but at the start of the beat, he can spend any number of time tokens, and he can advance one space for each token spent this way. So he doesn't want to do that, doesn't want to waste his time tokens, so he just stays where he is, and he hits, uh, he hits Haikura for, or Haikaru for four damage. And that's the end. Once the, the round is over, you'll take your cards, you will put them here, move this pile over, and then take these cards into your hand. So when you play a set of cards, for the next two rounds, you're not going to be able to use that exact same set of cards. So you got to be careful when you use an attack, thinking about that. Now, there are all different things on an attack, but one of the things I want to mention is Stun Guard. Uh, a few characters have Stun Guard. For example, you can see Stun Guard 2 on this card. Whenever your opponent gets the uh, priority and they attack you and do damage, you are stunned and cannot attack back. That's why priority is so important. However, if you have Stun Guard, like he has Stun Guard 2, as long as he takes 2 or less damage, then he will still be able to attack back. And there's all different sorts of things in the cards. I mean, we're really talking a wide range of special abilities. Some people are immune to stun. There are cards that let you move backwards. You can move past your opponent. And when it happens, you hit them on the other side. Some people can push their opponent back into the wall. Some people are really good at shooting all the way across the board. Other people can move around and they do better at maneuvering. And other people just want to move in close and slugfest. Uh, one of the characters can play two of these cards at a time. And there's just special abilities in all the characters I s seem to me to be very well balanced. There's also other variants in the rule book. And I want to mention the rule book here. It has kind of like a little comic uh, intro which shows you how to play the game in a very simple manner and then tells you how to play the game all the way through. But there's all these different variants where you have the special actions where you can use a mega attack which is on your character but you can only do that when your your life is low and then you have to play a special card to do so. You can play with, you know, experienced characters. You can play in different arenas. The game comes with different arenas cards, which will give special abilities. So think about your fighting game where you're fighting in here in a forest lab, or you're fighting on top of an airship. And so there's special abilities there. You can have tag teams. You can play multiplayer. You can do a, a tournament. You can, you can play two against one, basically turn one of the characters into a boss with a special set of cards. And so there's a lot going on, but basically, even, you know, there's multiplier, but it comes down to this. You're fighting the other guy, the first guy to beat the other one up is the winner. All right, now you may have noticed that one of my favorite games from this year, barely this year, is Yomi. It came out the very beginning, like the first week of January. And this one here comes out near the end of the year. But there's going to be a lot of similarities between this and Yomi because they both do the same thing. They're both fighting games, although... Serlin Games came out with Yomi and Flash Duel, and this feels kind of like a combination of both. The mm. big thing, the difference here, is that this game movement really matters. I mean, really Incredible. matters. And when the book says these characters are more difficult to play, it's true. Yeah, they're not lying to you. <laughs> and, and really, because we tried it. Sam tried a, a, a difficult character, got plowed down. I tried a difficult character and I think it was a flawless victory for the other side. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know, was but but still, we can see these characters and see their potential. Yeah. One of the things that's really interesting about this game is the characters are completely different. Yeah. They, I, I've never, I don't think I've played any game where I felt like the characters felt this different. Not a card game. 
Yeah. I mean, we, we've played, you know, games like, you know, Twilight Imperium 3 where the races are completely different. And there's been another one recently where we did that, and I can't remember what it is. But there was a complete difference between the different player powers. But I've never seen a card game mimic that, and, and this one does. Yeah, it really, and, it, and it really does it well. I'm just going to say flat out, this is easily one of my favorite games of the year. Hmm. I was blown away by how good this is, and after we played it, I kept thinking about playing it again. I'm not, I mean, I feel kind of weird saying this because I, I was so much into the older card games, but right now I'm not really that much of a card game player anymore. I, I'd, I'd rather have a board out, I'd rather have a lot of components, um, but this one, I wanted to play it again right off the bat, and I wanted to play it again after that, so it's got somewhat of an addictive nature to it. It's, it's not collectible or anything like that, um, but it's addictive, and it's fun addictive. And there's 35 combinations only that you have, which is interesting enough. You know, it's not just rock, paper, scissors. And right. at any point in time, you can only play, uh, what did I say, 15 of those combinations mm -hmm. because you have two out on the table. So the game really does rely on knowing the game better. After you play the game more and more, you will know what your opponent has in his hand because you know the cards really well. Right. And you're going to sit there and say, okay, he can do this and do that. I mean, some, some of the things that the characters do... It, they had more than 35 combinations, like the one character he played yeah. could combine their last style with their next style. So that made the combinations right. even more. Um, there was There's one guy who's just a tank. He just walks up and just sucks up the damage. Mm -hmm. And to beat him, you're going to have to be really maneuverable. Right. Another guy, you know, boop, 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 shoots a little right. gun, but he can really nail you. It's just that if you get up close, he's like paper. Yeah, he can't hit you. <laughs> It's, you know, he, he shoots with guns, so if you get too close to him, he, he, you're not within his range of hitting you. So it's, but um, uh, I don't know. I, I I'll give this uh, I don't know two. Oh, we haven't been giving thumbs for our reviews. Oh, lately. that's okay. We don't have to give thumbs. It <laughs> usually just makes people angry anyway. So um, I'm gonna give this one 18 thumbs up. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this three Christmas ornaments up because there's a girl back here with a Christmas ornament. And hey, it's you know tis the season, right? So I'm gonna give it uh, three um, Christmas ornaments up. Yeah. The, the, to me. The, the amount of variety in the box with mm -hmm. 18 characters, right. and then I got four extra bonus characters. So there's tw I, we have 22 characters. There's uh, there like six different styles of play. You are getting a ton yeah. in this thing. And I'm telling you, it's going to take a while to master one person. Maybe not the robot. You know, he's yeah. not so hard to master. Right. But they have in the back of the rule book, they tell you these guys are easy to play, these guys are moderate to play, and these guys are difficult to play. And the ones that are difficult have just as good of a chance at winning, but if you play them without knowing what you're doing, you're just going to get plowed over. And knowing when to use tokens and cards, there's a lot. This is a thinky game to some degree. Yeah, it is. But oh, I, just, I, I just think it's really neat. Yeah, you have to use strategy, or you can't just uh, throw a couple cards down and hope it works. Um, there's so many things you have to take into account. That's on right. Button hand. mashers cannot win this That's game. That's right. You cannot win no this game. No button mashing. No button mashing. So... Um, you really do have to put thought into what cards you play, what moves you're going to put down. So um, uh, I think if you're 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 in that you're in that line of, of fighting games, card games, this is a, a solid pickup for you. Now you like this better than Yomi? Yes, I did. And the reason I liked this better than Yomi is because there wasn't so much on the card. Um, there wasn't so much reading. There wasn't so many icons. There, I mean, Yomi just had so much information on the card. This doesn't. And I'm not a big fan of, of, of that busyness on the cards. So this has information on the cards, but not as much. And it's a little bit more streamlined, I think, than Yomi is. I think Yomi's faster once you know how to play it. But, I don't know, they're really close in how much I like them. And they're very similar in their theme, but they're completely different games. You can easily own both of them yeah. and get a completely different experience. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll agree with that. So War of the Indines, which we, I don't even know what that means. <laughs>